What's up guys, this is Cage Side Sports Talk, I'm Jackson, and let's start off with me telling you what this channel is going to be all about. Basically, we'll talk all things involved with major MMA organizations. Mainly, I'll talk UFC, Bellator, and every now and then I'll talk a little World Series of Fighting. We'll talk previews and predictions. We'll like give day-to-day -day news on big things coming out of these organizations. Uh, so, uh, with that said, let's get things started today. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is UFC on Fox Sports 82. Uh, Johnny Hendricks versus Steven Thompson. Now, this card was supposed to be UFC 196, but both Cain Velasquez and Fabricio Verdum had to pull out of their fights, so now it's going to be on Fox Sports 1 headline by Johnny Hendricks and Steven Thompson. To me, this is a card with a lot of implications on it. Obviously, you have in the main event the former welterweight champion and uh, now number two ranked welterweight in the world, Johnny Hendricks versus Steven Wonderboy Thompson. This is obviously obviously a huge fight for both fighters. You have Johnny Hendricks, who's trying to put his weight cut issues in the past, reassert his presence in the welterweight division, and tr trying to get his title back. But on the other hand, you have the number eight, eight ranked welterweight in the world, and Stephen Thompson, who's trying to make a push into that top five and be among the Robbie Lawlers, the Carlos Condits, the Johnny Hendricks, the Roy McDonalds, and make his presence felt and be one of those elite names that we talk about. And uh, win over the former champion, Johnny Hendricks could certainly do that for him. To me, this is a fight that can go snag fight at the Night Honors because of how great of a matchup it is. You obviously have the flashy, speedy, and technical fighting from Stephen Thompson, but on the other hand, you have that raw, true, one-punch knockout power and war-class wrestling that Johnny Hendricks brings. I think this makes for a good, good fight. It could go either way. It's a five-round fight now, which... For Steven Thompson, it might be a change because he hasn't seen that yet. And Johnny Hendricks, he's seen it three different times, twice against Lawler and once against St. Pierre. But Steven Thompson, he's a well-conditioned fighter. Uh, and I think he'll be able to handle that adjustment. And this will make for a really great fight. Uh, it could go either way. Both of these fighters possess that knockout, fighter, knockout power. And both of these fighters, I think, can go the distance. Another fight on this card with some title implications on it is a flyweight bout featuring Joseph Benavidez and Zach Makovsky. Joseph Benavidez is currently ranked the number one flyweight in the world and is riding a four-fight win streak with his last loss coming from the last two losses coming from the current champion Demetrius Johnson. He wants to get another title shot, but he can't just look at that title shot and look past Zach Makovsky because Zach Makovsky is really looking to make a name for himself and he's a dangerous fighter and he could have what it takes to bring down the number one contender and this would be a big fight for him because he brings a lot of things that can hurt Joseph Benavidez. Uh, this could be another fight, my personal pick for fight of the night, because it brings a fast, high pace, and nonstop action, as of any flyweight bout does. We don't know what we're going to see. I think this fight will go the distance, and we'll see a battle, a really gritty fight, and we'll find a contender out of this fight. To in this card, uh, one of the less thought of implications on this card is the UFC career of uh, Roy Big Country Nelson. It's no surprise that Nelson's really been struggling lately. He's lost five of his last six fights, and it's almost been two two whole years since his last win, uh, as of maybe June or July, if I'm not if I'm right. Uh, one of the, another reason he's turning 40 this year, which could be another sign that this could be the last bout of his MMA career. It could be the end of the road for him. I hate to see him go because he's been one of my favorite fighters to watch when he's doing good, uh, but I. I hate even more to see fighters fight out of their prime and only diminish their legacy because I think it looks bad for him. Just look what BJ Penn's doing. He's fighting past his prime and that's making him look worse. Uh, but I think this is Roy Nelson's last fight because I don't think it'd be wise for him to keep fighting after this one. If it is, it's been a pleasure and an honor to watch him fight, but we must go on. Uh, second today, we're going to talk about the light heavyweight title picture. Uh, uh, this is a very interesting topic to me because you have the champion Daniel Cormier with a couple high caliber fighters who were worthy of a title shot. Starting off with the most obvious one, you have the former champion in uh, DC's arch rival John Bones Jones. Uh, by now, everyone knows about knows about John Jones outside of the company issues, his felony hit and run, his drug possession, being stripped of the title, being suspended. But I want to take the attention off that and strictly talk what's involved with the UFC. Jones is the number one option when it comes to DC's type being t DC's title contender. It's his arch rival, the former champion that never really lost his belt, and the only person to ever beat Daniel Cormier. I think this is a fight that uh, Cormier is going to much, be much more prepared for this time because he's been able to learn from his mistakes. 
He's beat Anthony Johnson. He's gone to a war with Anthony Gus or Alexander Gustafson, sorry, just like John Jones did. He's much more prepared. He's going to fight with less emotion. And I, I think this is going to make for a better fight with John Jones. John Jones can't look over Daniel Cormier because he's a much different fighter than he was the last time they fought. I think these are two fighters in the prime of their career, the best shape of their life. And these are two fighters that are hungry and both want that title badly. But as we all know, only one can have it. And we'll, I think we'll get to see this fight in late April. It's going to, what I think can be fight of the year, just because how high caliber and how good of fighters these both, both these gentlemen are. Another obvious contender is Anthony Rumble Johnson coming fresh off his absolute dismantling of Ryan Bader on UFC on Fox. This is another great fight for Cormier because it has some someone he's faced before and beat. Johnson has that raw one-punch knockout power that could knock out anyone in the division, probably even in the entire UFC. Just look at him knocking out Noguera, finishing Gustafson, knocking out Manuel and uh, Ryan Bader. He even had Daniel Cormier stunned in the first 30 seconds of his fight. Now, this is just that one, raw one-punch knockout power that automatically puts Johnson into title contention. I think he's getting better with every fight. He's getting, he was able to defend the takedown against Ryan Bader and finish him. And the the wrestling is really what hurting him as Daniel Cormier, I think, if he fights again. But he said he wants to wait. But if he fights again, that just gives him another chance to get better at defending wrestling. Or even with his time off, even if it's an eight-month layoff, it gives him all that time to defend against the wrestling, no matter who he's going to fight, John Jones or Daniel Cormier. A uh, third series contender to me is uh, Alexander Gustafson because... Uh, but he's going to have to do some work to get back into that title picture. Uh, whenever he does fight, uh, it always makes for a world-class fight. Just look at John Jones and uh, Daniel Cormier. But Gustafson gets that close and can't seem to seize the moment, just like against Jones and Cormier and even Ale uh, Anthony Johnson. I think a great matchup for him would be against Ryan Bader. Both are coming off losses. Both are still near the top of the division. Either way, it still makes for a great fight. Uh, third, today we're going to be talking about Sage Northcutt's, Sage Northcutt's first loss. Uh, Northcutt's now 7-1, and one, still 19 years old, and was one of the most heavily hyped prospects of recent UFC memory. He was discovered by UFC president Dana White and Matt Serra and Nick the Tooth on the episode of Looking for a Fight on the, the reality show on UFC Fight Pass. Northcutt went on to win his first two UFC fights, but it was uh, at his welterweight debate on Saturday. He was beaten by uh, Barbarena. And he, uh, Barbarino was kind of overwhelmed by Northcutt's athleticism and his speed in the first round and his karate. But Northcutt got on his back on the second round, didn't look comfortable there, couldn't get up, and was uh, grinded out and finished with an arm arm triangle only from half guard, which a lot of people were criticizing from, saying he was, he's not about it. He was promoted to the UFC too heavily. He was overhyped. But that first loss can be the best thing in someone's career because you just see – even look at Conor McGregor, uh, Joe Duffy finished him with the same exact thing at Arm Triangle early in his career. And look where Conor McGregor's at now. He's a featherweight champion looking to capture the light heavyweight uh, belt as well. Became the first two division simultaneous champion in the UFC history. And he's arguably the best fighter in the UFC right now. So that first loss can be what fuels you and makes you what makes you your best. Uh, Sage Northcutt said, I'll be back and better than ever. And I think that's true. He's going to get back to the grim. He's going to grind it out. And he's going to be in the best condition of his life. He's going to be a better fighter. And he's going to learn from his mistake. Now let's move up from the UFC to Bellator. Uh, pop, probably the most popular thing with Bellator is the Benson Henderson moving, deciding not to resign with the UFC and moving to Bellator. Uh, uh, to me, this is something I hate to see happen because Henderson was one of my favorite fighters to see fight in the UFC. And I thought he still had a shot to get back up in the division and get into title contention in the light heavy the light heavyweight division sorry but i was uh, i wish well for him and i'm sure he's going to make a name for himself in bellator get that title shot quickly and i think he'll eventually capture a belt and bellator uh i think he's still without a doubt one of the most talented fighters in the world and there's no limit to see what he can do in bellator uh, the last thing we're going to talk about today is a uh, 2016 up and coming free agents uh a couple i could see moving from the ufc are sterling and a uh, are mainly Matt Mitrion because Matt Mitrion I think is kind of falling off the heavyweight. Uh, I think I I don't even know if he's ranked right now. 
I just see him being able to be more productive in Bellator because I think his days in the UFCs are numbered, and I just don't think he has anything left in the UFC. Another popular one's been uh, Alistair Overeem's contracts up this year, but I don't see him moving because he just knocked out uh, former light heavyweight champion Junior Santos, and he's making getting back into that title picture. It could be any day. If someone gets hurt, Stipe gets hurt, hey, Alistair, we need you to come fill in this hat. We need you to fight for the title. He's any given moment he could get that title shot, and I don't think he's going anywhere. So that's basically all we have for today. Uh, so our first episode, I'd like to thank everyone who comes and watches this first episode. If you like this, why don't you go right down there and give it a like. And if you really liked it, uh, please subscribe. It helps me a lot. I'll be back shortly this week with predictions for the uh, UFC on Fox Sports 82, Hendricks versus Thompson, and we'll continue to have at least one video every single week. Uh, again, it's been real, guys. Give me suggestions on what you, you want to hear, what you want to see, and thanks for watching.